Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome along to the vlog. We've got the pilot kit out and we're going to start brewing today. We're going to be brewing some beers ready for our Christmas advent calendars, which will be available on harrisonsbrewery.com forward slash shop. And we're doing a double American IPA today. So ignore the fact that the water meter is missing from the uh, control panel. That's not a big deal. We've got the HLT on. It's probably going to take forever to get up to temperature, actually. So I might just transfer that liquid across to the boil kettle, where in the boil kettle, we have the ability to heat twice as fast with two elements. So while that's heating up, I'm going to go upstairs. We're going to open Beersmith, and we're going to quickly have a look at the recipe. I'm not going to dwell on it too long. The recipe will be available on harrisonsbrewery.com forward slash shop forward slash recipes. Uh, but it might not get up there for a while. We've got plenty of recipes to be going at, but I do need to look at them and update them because I've um, made a few discoveries regards water treatment and residual alkalinity. So I want to factor that into all our recipes moving forwards. So this is on, we're heating water up. I'm just gonna get that cleaned out over there, the boil kettle so we can transfer the strike water to the boil kettle and hence heat it up faster and then we'll come back and mash in after we've printed the recipe off of course. So we're in the office and I'm developing the recipe for the Christmas double IPA for 2022 and apart from quite a big hot bill, I mean it looks pretty good to me, we've got a few uh, curveballs thrown into the air which you might not be used to seeing on a homebrew level shall we say so we're going to put some ascorbic acid in there to protect the beer from oxidation during canning we're also going to add some finings into the tank to uh, help clear before it goes into can and I'm going to add some yeast nutrient because we are looking for a big beer 8.5% so to help us get there and to help thin the body out a little bit, we're going to put some dextrose in. 5% of the um, fermentables is going to be dextrose. That should help a little bit. I might actually up that, I'm not sure. And then we move into uh, the boil hops. I am going to put some boil hops in, again, to protect from oxidation. I seem to find that Nipa style beers with no boil hops tend to oxidize very, very easily. So this time round, we're going to pop some of those in there. If you can see that, you can. I'm highlighting where I'm where I'm looking. And at the start, the water. So this is where I've had a bit of a revelation, and something's just clicked recently, and uh, it really has helped um, figure out where we want to be in terms of our water profile. So. One number to bear in mind here is the colour. Down here, we've got the SRM, so 6.7. Now that colour is important because it tells us the power of the grains, if you like, to resist change in pH, depending on the water that you put in. So let's have a look on the water profile. I've added my water, here it is at the top, so you can see my numbers that I've got from the water report so 49 ppm calcium 23 mag nesium 12.4 uh, sodium 31 uh, sulfate 43 chloride and 158 uh, in I think that's bicarbonate is it bicarbonate I think so and uh, basically it's that carbonate level there I'm sure it's not bicarbonate actually I think it's something else anyway it's that carbonate level HCO3 which drives what's known as the residual alkalinity which is down here at 40 parts per million and that residual alkalinity dictates that when you mix it with a specific color of grain and the and counting what water profile you have dictates the exact ideal colour for the water, so the ideal colour of beer for the water. 
So the ideal colour of beer for this water is between 8.5 and 13.3 SRM. So I've had to play with the amounts of water salts, um, calcium sulphate and calcium chloride in this instance. You can always use sodium chloride as well to increase the chloride levels. But it's a balancing act of trying to get this colour range down as low as possible to suit our colour on this side, which is 6.7, and also balancing the beer. So I don't want it to be too balanced. I would like to err on the bitter side. So sulphate to chloride ratio of 1.6, and that's saying that the balance is going to be slightly bitter. And then, of course, while we're doing that, all the time we're monitoring these numbers and we're trying not to go over the recommended limits. So, for instance, um, I think calcium, you don't want to be going over 150. So you can see that we're trying to keep below it there on the mash profile, can you see that? And then the same with sulphates, you don't want to really be going over 250 with the uh, sulphate levels. So we're trying to rein it all in, and all the time I'm balancing that residual alkalinity with the colour, with the sulphate to chloride ratio and then making sure we stay within our acceptable limits and that's how I've moved forward to developing uh, recipes or the water profile to suit the recipes should I say. Something that I don't do, um, I don't add chalk so chalk takes a long time to dissolve so it doesn't really have that much influence on changing the alkalinity of your beer so we don't put any salt in, uh, chalk in even and um, then once we've figured this out we can come across to the mash page and down here during the mash I'm going to run downstairs I'll be re taking a reading of the grain temp, a reading of the mash ton temp and we'll be able to put this in, tell us what exactly our strike temperature wants to be. It thinks 73 degrees at the moment, but we shall see. I've also opened up the mash step itself, and I've changed the grain to water ratio. Now we know how much grain we're going to be putting in. I want to add 3 litres per kilogram today. So I've put that into that box, and that's telling me I need 47 litres of water. And then I'll also run downstairs, and after I've mashed in, I will take a pH reading. Now, Beersmith predicts that my pH is going to be 5.7. I will run downstairs, and if it is 5.7, then what I will do is my target pH is 5.2. My uh, acid to bring it down is lactic, so it will tell me that in the mash I'll need 26 millilitres of acid to get down to 5.2. If we take into consideration the fact that I've done my water correctly and we are on the money with how the grains are going to affect that residual alkalinity. So it's a lot to take in and uh, I'm 10 years a grain brewer about and uh, I still find it a school day when I sit down and look at this and there's always something that I don't know about. Also I've decided to get rid of things such as all of the built in mash profiles, carbonation profiles and everything else and I'm starting to build my own on everything now even um, the hops and the fermentables I've turned for instance uh, if we go and add fermentables you'll see we don't have that many fermentables in here I've turned them off and I've turned on the ones that I can get I'm using Muntins at the moment so that's what we're doing there and then on the hops, I've left all the hops in there because I want to be able to look at what I'd like to buy in the future. But I've made custom versions of certain ones. So a tannum here, 6% from the US is preloaded. Well, I've got some 2014 a tannum in start. I really should throw it away. But you can see all the details there. If we scroll down, for Amarillo, for instance, uh, a little bit more acceptable. Amarillo in... Uh, 2020 year and then you can put in your own alpha acid beta acids and price it certainly isn't that expensive so there we go that just makes it a little bit easier for you to uh, figure everything out now the cost on this is way out because obviously I've just spotted 
that uh, there are certain things which aren't correctly priced. So it's going to be that Amarillo, isn't it? Oh no, it's down at 30 now. But I bet you it's stuff like Brow Sol, Pound of Mill. That's not a Pound of Mill. So we can alter that, you know, and that brings the prices down. But anyway, that's the recipe developed. And uh, I'm going to print it off. I'm going to run downstairs. I'm going to get the grains out. And we're going to mash this baby in. I hope that wasn't too long and boring for you. So I've made my measurements and I've been upstairs and put them into the uh, sponge water calculator and it's telling me that I need 73.7 degrees uh, strike water and 49.59 degrees of it. Well we're a bit over 50 um, litres, sorry not degrees, and we're about a degree high there. So I'm quite happy to just let that rock and roll into the bottom of the mash tun very slowly. We've got all the grain in there and it's a lovely bright sunny day so we're going to get some flickering on the camera I think. Maybe if I turn around a bit it'll help. No, not really. So uh, strike water has been heated up in the boil kettle. We've got our sparge water and the recirculation water for the Herms coil should we need it if we don't hit the temperature we want to do on the mash and then when this is finished transferring I'll empty the remaining water out of here and hopefully we'll be right on target with our pH but we'll take a reading and we'll run back upstairs put that in and see how much lactic acid we need to adjust it so we've mashed in we're 15 minutes in and I always like to get everything as close to where I want it within the first 15 minutes we are still low on the temperature though, which is worrying. That means that it's not taking into consideration the heat losses during the transfer into the mash tun. And of course, maybe the mash tun was colder than I thought. I measured air temperature and grain temperature foolishly. It should have been grain temperature and mash tun temp. So this could have been colder, that could have had an influence. But we are climbing, we're looking for 63, uh, 66. So we're about 2.2 degrees off of that at the moment, but we're gonna get up there, no problem. I've got the recirc on, and it's going through the HLT, and the HLT is at 75 degrees. So we should end up at 66 very, very soon. And then I've taken um, a mash reading. I went upstairs, it was um, 5.7. I put it into the calculator, it said add 20 mil of lactic which I did and there you can see we're at 5.26 which for me is the best mash I've had for a while so that means that that residual alkalinity part of the equation is very important to get right and it's helped us get there so next time round probably a few extra degrees on the strike temp it's always easy to add a bit of cold water if you overshoot than it is to raise the whole temperature of the, the system by a few degrees. So that's what I do on the big kit. I was just seeing if the software would help us today, but obviously it didn't. Also, I'm keeping an eye on this manometer. So because this has dropped lower than that one, I'm pulling too fast on the grain bed. So I've just slowed it down. You see if I stop it, that'll come back up. So we'll just put a bit of flow on. We want some flow. There we go. And that just stops us getting a stuck mash by sucking down too hard on the grain bed. Because it's quite a full mash done today with 15 kilograms plus. We've made it to the sparge. Everything's working really well actually. I'm very happy with how the transfer's going. The work coming out of there is absolutely crystal clear so i'll be quite interested to see exactly how much we gather i'm not bothering with a sparge arm today i've just got the water trickling into the top i think provided i keep it around the 60 litre mark at the back we shouldn't have any problems we're not drawing on the manometer so i can't see that being an issue at all made sure i've turned all the boil elements and everything else off and then over here i've just been gearing up to get this 
chiller working again. So um, I've just been testing the head height of this pump that's in there. It's a 1500 litre pump. If I had to build them again, I'd scale it up maybe from, uh, I think that said it's 25 watts. I'd probably go the next size up. So maybe 3000 litres, just because it does have a little bit of trouble pumping through this narrow pipe. So I could combat that by putting a, a larger pipe there, but um, we're gonna sit the chiller there after I've cleaned this up. This is some glycol that's leaked out of it. And it's only pumping up to kind of here, so 1500 mil head height really. It should be able to cope with that. It has worked fine in the past, every now and then they just get an airlock. So I'm gonna put this back together, slot it back under there, hook it up to this, and then uh, we'll get out the Firmzillas and give them a good clean. Gemma's already put them on the cask wash, so they just need a good uh, manual scrub on the outside, a rinse, and then an acid before we put before we put the beer in there. And then it just leaves us to hook up this cooling manifold, and of course the temperature probes, which are precariously dangling here. I don't know why that extension leads there. To be fair, we'll get rid of that. I don't think I need it for anything. Come on, sunshine. And uh, yeah, we'll get it all hooked up. We'll go and find the jackets for the Firmzillas. And uh, I'm about to weigh out the hops and everything else. So don't jinx it. So time for some hop additions. We are doing really well on here today. So I've already got the 60 minute and the 45 minute edition in here. This is the 30 minute edition, and then there's nothing until the protoflot goes in. So I'm using the leaf hop today just to get it used up. I've got quite a bit of leaf hop that I don't actually want, because uh, I can't use it in the big boil kettle, unfortunately. So we'll get it all in here. Doesn't like going in though. Let's rinse off the spoon. It might be a case of, is that warm? It is a bit warm. I was going to try and dip the basket, but we'll get there. Yeah, it's going in now. So this is going to be boiled for another 20 minutes. And then the protoflac tablets will be in next. Brew day completed. Would you look at that? So look at the angle that that tilt's floating at. You don't see them on that angle very much. Now we picked up a little bit of protein on the transfer, which I'm not worried about in the slightest. Uh, I've got the yeast in. I've got the Clarity Firm in there, Bruce Clarity. Um, clean the mash tun out. This is the hop. It was a very slow transfer, but I kind of knew it would be because there were that many hops I had to take them out of the hop basket. Um, and instead I just put the pellets in there. But that was a big hop bill and we transferred within half an hour or 40 minutes. So that'll do for me. So if we come across to the sink, I'm just doing this because my fingers are sticky. I managed to collect enough for a gravity sample and a little bit more. So we're just gonna spin around here and we've got 10.75.7, uh, I would say on there. And the temperature, Gem, if you'd like to do the honors, I think is a little bit on the warm side. So we'll be adding some points on that. Obviously the warmer it is, the lower the reading comes out. So for every degree away from 20 celsius we have to add on 0 0.002 so that's 17 degrees over 20 
So two seventeens is thirty four. So let me just go to my sheet and if I do it like this, so we add one point zero seven five seven is what I thought we got. And we need to add one point zero zero what did I say, Gem? Three four. Zero, zero 2 for every one over so it'll be 1.0 zero, zero, yeah 3 4 is that right I think it is correct yes so we're going to end up with 1.0 0 uh, 7 9 1 and what we were shooting for, 1.076. So we're up, which is not a bad thing. 1.0791. I'll double check that math though, so, because I've done it on camera and uh, my head might not be perfect. Oh, Gemma's just double checked it for me. We've nailed it. So there we go. We've got the Christmas double IPA in the fermenter. One thing I did notice though, the colour is very different to what Beersmith suggests it's going to be, but bear in mind, that's showing you a glass of beer. This is 55 litres in a very, very deep fermenter, so we'll reserve judgement on what colour the beer is going to come out. Maybe we can get a... no, that's not going to work. Well, there we go. So that's the recipe. Uh, I'll get it online as soon as possible. Right, so I've just pushed the whole thing into the corner and we've got to hook up the cooling mechanism and put the jacket on to keep it warm. And then apply a spunding valve. Oh, I better check which one of these actually goes to the dip tube. Right then, we'll have the dip tube on the right. So the spunding valve wants to be on this side. So this will let the pressure out. I am also uh, a little bit concerned about the temperature of this beer getting away with it and blowing out because we are quite full up at 55 litres so I'll probably rain it back at 19 degrees and we'll come and check it well I'll be here first thing in the morning but if it looks like it's getting excited then we will reduce the temperature a bit so I'm going to hook this up to number four here it is so I've got to get this pipe work now, oh, right, these two little fellas need to come off. A bit tricky. I'm going to get a bit closer, Jim, so you can see what's going on. There we go. So that's the feed in from the, uh, no, that's the feed in. Yeah, that's the feed in from the uh, motorised valve and this is the feed out back down to the cooling unit just below us. So we'll open both of those now, make sure that that is closed. Then we have to get the number four thermocouple. This one. Put the rest of them back there. Then we've got to feed this back down. What the what was that? Back down into this little probe thing here. So we want to shove our probe as far in there as possible so it's submerged in the liquid. It isn't actually in the liquid, it's in a, a thermo well. So we shove that in there. That looks like it's gone in nicely. Then we're going to turn number four on. Number one is already on for some reason. 
I'll just turn number one off. There we go. So, that's set for 12.6 degrees, so we're going to set this for 19.5 today. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19.5. There we go, and it's set to come on to cool, so that tells me that the temperature of the beer is at 20. 0.4 degrees which is a good thing and we're ready to go spunion valves on there that's open so it should be able to off gas overnight and i could do with just testing that we've got flow when this comes on but other than that we're all done <laughs> trick me i did trick you so there we go folks uh that's another brew day finished well that's it, it just leaves me to clean all this mess up. Uh, in the meantime, Gemma's also cast all this beer behind us, look at that. Casking and kegging. So I've got to clean this up, then I'm going to go home, maybe get this up on the website, but I'm also going to have to put together some more recipes for tomorrow, because we're going to be brewing on this kit all week. So keep liking, keep subscribing, and we'll see you on another video again pretty soon. Cheers.